welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is a quick start guide to get you in the air as soon as possible here in the MH60 helicopter by Miltech. So let's get started here in 2024. Of course, we need to remove all of the flags and shocks before we get started or bad things can happen. So the first one is down here by the landing gear. We hit the chocks as well. We'll grab the two flags here right behind the uh, pilot's door. There you go. And then there's the engine cover right there. There's one more above the window or the windshield here on the left side. And that is good to go. Now we'll go ahead and move to the inside and hop inside the door. All right, we're in the cockpit. Let's start on the overhead and we'll get the battery turned on. Just like that, we'll go ahead and get our console lights. There's our upper lights, lower lights, center console lights. Also on the left side, you can get your formation lights on, flare shield lights on, position lights, which are right here. Get my anti-collision lights to both, my nav lights here to normal. And then let's get the APU started. And to do that, we'll get our air source set to APU. That's down. We'll get our fuel pump set to APU boost. You can now hear the fuel pump. We'll go down to the center pedestal, make sure we get our fuel boost pumps, which are these two right here, right above the circuit breakers. Get those two on. Back to the overhead, turn on our APU controller, and we can hit our APU gen, which is right here. And you can hear the APU starting up. When the APU is done powering on, we'll see APU on here at the top. Now let's get our displays turned on by using the scroll wheel to switch to day or night mode, whichever you like, on all four screens. There we go. And slide back to the center pedestal again, and we get our computer power on, pre-BU, EGI 1 and 2 power on, our mission power on, and ISD power on. If your blades are folded, you can go ahead and turn your blade fold master on and you can spread or fold your blades if needed. Back to the top side, we're going to get our hydraulic utility pump on. You can also hear that. At this point, I usually set my uh, barometric pressure to do that here on your main MFD. You can see your actual current barometric pressure right here, 2992. To change that, we'll click on barrel. You'll see barrel pop up and we'll use the multifunction scroll here to go up and down there. Now to change it over here, you just use this little scroll here, easily done. And you can press the I key in Microsoft Flight Sim to sync it to the current weather conditions. While we're over here, we'll also uncage our standby uh, instrument. And now let's move down to the radio. So to change your radio, we'll click on tune. That's gonna pop up a dialog here. Uh, to manipulate this dialog, you can actually hit the uh, page up and page down key, so up, down and so on so we'll start with the vh uh v uhf and to change this we'll go down here to our center controller we'll hit select that'll select standby and i can type in any frequency i want so one two two eight zero zero and we'll click enter here on the keypad and that's going to swap out our frequencies now to change our transponder we can stay on the screen and click the page down key to go down to IFF mode three. That's our transponder. And so again, to manipulate that as well, all we gotta do is hit select and then type in our new transponder code. So I'm gonna put two, one, one, six and enter. There we go. And to remove this off our screen, we can click tune again and now it's gone. And now that our radios are programmed and tuned, we can talk to ATC. Let's go ahead and get our engine started up. So first we'll look around, make sure we are all clear. Make sure all of our doors are uh, closed. And again, all ground equipment is removed from the aircraft. And we'll go back down here to our center panel and go to SAS1, SAS2, and trim. Make sure those are turned on. We'll slide down the center pedestal down to our stabilator and hit auto control on. Back to the top again. And we'll go to engine ignition here on the top right. Set that to normal. And we'll go to our fuel selectors, one and two, which are these... Uh, like ball round levers here and it's kind of hard to see but we need to actually move this forward till it gets to xfd for transfer and do the same thing on both sides so move that fully forward using the scroll wheel and to start her up we can click on this gray button here above the power uh lever so click that 
and that's going to fire up our engine. We can see our NG rising, our oil pressure is going up as well. We'll get around to 16 on the NG, and then we can move our engine control lever to idle, which is right here. So again, scroll wheel to idle. You'll hear the engines firing up. You'll see our NG climbing beyond 16, and we'll monitor our engines as they go. Which is now stable, let's go ahead and do the same process on the right engine. So hit the starter button here, and then we'll go ahead and move our power controller up to idle. And it's gonna fire up our second engine there. There we go. And then we'll go here and set our power controllers all the way to flight to fly. And then I'll move my fuel selector to DIR on both sides. There we go. That's the middle position. Next up, let's get our generators turned on. That's right here. On and on. We'll change our air source from the APU to the engines. That's the up position. And we no longer need the APU. So let's get the APU gen off. APU controller off. There we go, and we probably don't need the APU boost anymore either. Alright, lastly, let's get our anti-ice stuff set up as needed. So we'll get some windshield heat turned on, and we get our pedo heat turned on, and that is it. And now, if you want to ground taxi, you can actually go down here and release your parking brake and unlock your tailwheel. If not, you can just use your collective as usual and uh, climb on out of here. I wasn't going to show this, but I thought as an added bonus, it'd be nice to show you guys the crew hover mode. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to change our hover altitude here. It's a hover altitude controller. So we're going to change it to about, uh, let's we'll say two, we can do 100 feet. And so as I rotate this purple knob, we'll notice that over here, we click on mode, map, HSI, and hover mode, we'll see that this purple little triangle will actually move up and down. So right now it's around 75. So if I rotate that knob, it's going to go up to 100, down to 50, wherever you want to be. This will be super helpful for doing search and rescue or any kind of uh, activity that requires hovering. So we'll do that. That's good right there. And then once we have that set, and we can do that in the air as well. We do not have to do, do, not have to do that on the ground. It is easier to explain while on the ground. So, all right, now that we're on the ground, let's go ahead and lift off. So I'm gonna add some collective or pull back the collective. We'll pull our side click towards us because we're gonna be uh, rolling forward here on takeoff. And we'll try to get into a manual hover ourselves here. So add a little bit more power. We get a decent amount of altitude here. Like so, what I'll do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, Hover taxi my way over to the water. 20 feet. And I go this way. 20 here. feet. 20 feet. Beautiful. Alright, we're beyond the fence. And we'll go ahead and click on this button here, which is auto flight, which is basically autopilot mode. When you turn that on, uh, it's just. You can still fly it. I can still rotate. I can turn. It's not like a traditional autopilot in that sense. So I can still kind of manipulate the aircraft and do what I need to do, but it's a bit more like, it's kind of helping me out. It's, I don't have to really touch the rudder pedals. I can let go of the uh, the joystick or the side click and it kind of will fly on its own a little bit. But let's go ahead and use a crew hover mode here. So first, in order to use crew hover mode, you don't necessarily have to be in a hover, but I'm gonna try to get myself into a, a simple hover or close to one, All right, that worked, that's good enough. We'll look down here, and we got to first turn on approach hover mode, so we'll click that. And the aircraft is going to try to kind of hover there, and then we'll go and hit crew hover. Aft, you have over control. Aft, I have over control. So that's basically, that's us giving up control to the crew, and now the crew is in, is, uh, in charge of hovering the aircraft. And if we look outside, we're not moving really at all, because the crew is hovering for us. So now we're basically in an auto hover mode. We can now uh, drop our basket down, open up our door. If we need to, we can open the door right here, click door, and right main door, open. You can do a hook up. So another bonus for search and rescue in particular, if we go to the overhead, you can power on the rescue hoist up here. 
let's set it to all and then you can do the controller up or down you can also map that to something in your in your uh in your throttle or joystick whatever now she's gonna yell at us saying lower altitude to 50 feet so what you can do as well while the crew uh hover is on we can actually still manipulate the manipulate this hover altitude so i can lower it down until i get to 50. lower altitude to 50 feet there we go 50. steady and again i'm not touching the actual controls all i'm doing is touching this purple knob for hover altitude while the crew hover is on and the aircraft or the crew is automatically just sitting us down to what looks like 41 feet uh, radar altimeter, so we're just below 50, which is perfect uh, for picking up our uh, victims for search and rescue missions. But anyways, guys, that is how you use the crew hover and a little quick start guide on the MH-60. Hopefully something in this video was helpful to you. Uh, enjoy. I've been loving this aircraft. Thanks for watching, and remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. I'm out.